A polynomial is in factored form if it is written as the product of two or more factors. That is the math way of saying it's in factored form if it's broken up with parentheses. So here's an example of a polynomial written in factored form. Um, 0 equals x plus 2 times x minus 3. That is a polynomial written in factored form. We have been looking at taking two binomials like this and multiplying it out, getting it out of factored form into expanded form. But now we're going to look back at factored form. The zero product property, which we just talked about, says that if you multiply things together and you get zero as an answer, one of those things must be zero. So in this example that I did up here, one of our things is x plus 2. Our other thing is x minus 3. Multiply those two things together and we get 0 as an answer. So that means that either x plus 2 has to equal 0 or x minus 3 has to equal 0. And that is how we are going to solve each of these equations. We simply have to think about if this thing was equal 0, what would be our solution? If this other thing was equal to 0, what would be our solution? So let's look at example 1. Use the zero product property to solve the equation. Our first thing is x minus 2. So put x minus 2 equal to 0, and let's solve that equation. How would we solve this equation and get x by itself? We would add 2 to both sides to get x equals 2. Now the other thing in here is x plus 3. So we also have to do x plus 3 equals 0. How would we solve that equation? Subtract 3 on both sides to get x equals negative 3. These are the two solutions to this equation. If I plug 2 in here, I'd get 2 minus 2. It wouldn't even matter that this ended up being 5 in the other set of parentheses because 0 times 5 is 0. If we plug negative 3 in, it doesn't matter that this would be negative 5. Negative 3 plus 3 is 0, and anything times 0 is 0. So we're looking for the numbers that will make this equation equal 0. Number two, the first thing, also known as a factor, is x plus 1. So we set that factor, that thing, equal to 0. The other thing, or the other factor, is x minus 3. We set that thing, that factor, equal to 0. Solve both of those equations to figure out what the solutions are. Okay, the gray one, what would we do? Subtract 1 on both sides to get x equals negative 1. The purple one, what would we do? Add 3, and that gives us x equals 3. Our solutions are x equals negative 1 and x equals 3. Okay, do you see any shortcuts? What do you notice? Yeah, basically look at the parentheses and just kind of switch it. Think about what number minus 3 is 0? Positive 3. What number plus 1 is 0? Negative 1. So do you see how it's like the opposite of what's in the parentheses? If you've got plus 1, your answer is negative 1. If you've got minus 3, your answer is negative 3. Now that works really well if you've got both sets of parentheses laid out for you. But let's look at number 3. Number 3 is a little bit different. There aren't two sets of parentheses. There's just one set of parentheses. But this x in front is one of those things. This says x times x minus 2. So if we think back to the card game that we played at the beginning of class, our first thing is x. How do we make x equal 0? We x equals 0. 
<clears throat> the other thing is x minus 2. So what is the solution for that one going to be? 2. <clears throat> so, yes, you make everything the opposite of what it is. But when you have this kind of naked x out here without parentheses, you can put parentheses around it to make it its own set of parentheses. And zero doesn't have an opposite. It's just zero. Okay, number four. What does squared mean? Multiply it times itself. So this should be written x plus five times x plus five equals zero. Now let's solve it. Our first thing is x plus five. Whoa. So x plus five equals zero. What's x going to be? Nope, not zero. Negative five. What number plus five is zero? Negative five. And if you can't see that, that's okay. Sometimes our brains don't work in that way. You can always, you know, flip to a different window. Um, you can always solve this like an equation, subtract five on both sides. So if you can't just automatically see the opposite the way some of us can, that's fine. Solve the equation. How about the other thing? The other thing is also x plus five. Do we really need to write x equals negative five and x equals negative five? Do we need to write it twice? No. The solution here is x equals negative five. You only need to write it once. So the shortcut here is if it's x plus five squared, both answers are going to be negative five. You only need to write it once. All right, turn to the back. Let's try a couple more. Number five is a little bit more complex. Our first thing is 3x minus 5. Now, in this case, we can't just look at it and take the opposite because it's not going to be just positive 5. So here we actually have to solve the equation. Start by adding 5 on both sides. That gives us 3x equals 5. Now, what else should we do to get x by itself? Divide by 3. So x equals 5 thirds. Okay, the other thing in this equation is x plus 7. So put x plus 7 equal to 0 and solve that equation. We would subtract 7 on both sides. x equals negative 7. Your solutions are x equals 5 thirds and x equals sub negative 7. So in number 6, if we think about the cards that we started with at the very beginning of class, we've got thing 1 times thing 2 equals 0. In number 6, thing 1 is 4. We can't change 4. That's just the first card is 4. That means the second card has to equal 0. Our second card is 2x minus 5. So set up the equation 2x minus 5 equals 0 and solve that equation. What would we do first to solve this equation? Add 5. That gives us 2x equals 5. What do we need to do next? Divide by 2. x equals 5 halves. In this case, there's only one solution. There's only one answer. But notice there's only one x in there. In number 5, there's two different x's, so there's two solutions. Here, there's only one of them, so there's only one solution. That leads us into the next part. 
A cubic equation is an equation that has x multiplied three times. So here, let me go back to what we started with. Instead of thing one times thing two equals zero, now we have thing one times thing two times thing three equals zero. So we have to basically set up three equations. We have to make thing one equal zero. We have to make thing two equal zero. And we have to make thing three equal zero. Okay, so back to the notes. <clears throat> Our first thing is x minus 4. So x minus 4 equals 0. And before we solve it, let's go ahead and write the rest of the equations too. Our second thing is x plus 6. So we also write down x plus 6 equals 0. What is our third thing? So our third equation is 4x plus 3 equals 0. Basically, this is, okay, that's really annoying me. Basically, this is math's tricky way of making you do three problems in one. So, solve all three of those equations and see what your three solutions are. We'd start by subtracting three on both sides to get four x equals negative three. Then we divide both sides by four to get x equals negative three-fourths. So because this is a cubic function, there's three things being multiplied, we have three solutions. We have four, negative six, and negative three-fourths. Okay, try number eight on your own if you haven't already. The only weird thing about number eight, what is the first thing? X. What is the second thing? X minus eight. And the third thing? is 3x plus 2. So set up your three equations, solve your three equations to get your solutions. Our first thing is just plain x, so the solution there is x equals 0. The next thing is x minus 8 equals 0. Add 8 to both sides to get x equals 8. Our third thing is a little bit more complex, 3x plus 2 equals 0. We would subtract 2 on both sides. So 3x equals negative 2. Then divide both sides by 3 to get x equals negative 2 thirds. So our solutions are 0, 8, and negative 2 thirds. Okay, if you haven't already, please try the last one on your own, and I'll come around and check how you're doing. Thing 1 is 3x minus 2, so 3x minus 2 equals 0. Thing 2 is 4x plus 3, so 4x plus 3 equals 0. Thing 3 is x plus 4. So x plus 4 equals 0. Solve each of those equations. You should end up with... x equals 2 thirds for thing 1. For thing 2, I believe it's negative 3 fourths. And then thing four should be the easy one. Thing four is x, or sorry, thing three, x equals negative four. All right. How are you feeling about this so far? Thumbs up, thumbs down. I know a lot of you are starting your assignment already. On your assignment, I do want you to look at number 10 and 11 at the bottom of the page. Do you see how those look different from any problem we did on our notes? We didn't have any graphs on our notes. But look at what the equation says. y equals x minus 5 times x plus 5. That looks just like our assignment, except it says y equals instead of 0 equals. They want you to find the x-coordinates of the point where the graph crosses the x-axis. At those points, the y value is 0. So they want you to do 0 equals x minus 5 x plus 5, 
and solve it exactly like we did in our notes.